Okay, so start from number five. Keep going from section one point four. Mostly, are the calculating question will be easier than the concept. Now, number five, find the function value. So, usually we talk about this function we call it evaluate. Sometimes we may see a a question asks you to simplify. Or sometimes ask you to solve. So mostly we have three different types of question, and this type evaluate. Evaluate means you input and try to find the output. And when we go to simplify or solve, um, I will explain more. But this question we just talk about how to evaluate. Evaluate you input. The number, so the function, they say h is a function. Now, when h is a function, we don't just say h. You need to have input. A machine without input cannot function. So that's the input. Input we always say x. So we read. H of X. They are all together. So when you see H and the, with a pocket for the machine to input X, it's not a multiplication. Be careful, okay? Many students, they thought that this is multiplication. <laughs> that is a big mistake. Let me erase those. So some students, they made a mistake because they didn't understand the notation. So it's not a mathematical problem. It's a reading problem. Okay. So if you say h of 2 means negative. So you say, oh, this is h. And the multiply with 2. That's a big mistake. Do you see this part? This part is this one, and what's this one equal to? H T. Yes, it's H of T. H of T. This is not the H. This is not the H. So if you say this is H, that's a big mistake. So this is a common mistake from our students. So be careful. When we say h of 2 means you want to change, sorry, you want to change, you want to change x to become 2. So you want to change, oh, let me change it to t, sorry. Okay, let me change to t, because right now we are using t, not the, so here, H or T, let me write down bigger so I can show you more work. So H or T is negative T squared plus T plus Y. Okay, so on your test, you should, you should show me the work. My tests are multiple choice questions, but I always have some space for you to show work. So when you take my class, that's a very important um, thing you have to understand is if on the test you only tell me the multiple choice answer A, B, C, D, you won't get any credit. You will earn zero. No matter your answer is right or wrong, or is 100% correct, use this. I want you to show work. And uh, you take my class to learn how to show work. And uh, you need to show all the work on your test sheet. So in my class, you need to learn what's my requirement to show the work. Okay, so please pay attention. I'm going to tell you how you show work for 
evaluation questions. So let me copy down the question here on the green color. H of t equal to this. And how you show the work? Because right now you need to input the 2 to the t. So I will ask you to rewrite you this question, but don't write down t. Because right now t is 2. So before you input, you just have to copy the question and make a parenthesis. Because this t suppose is the input. And now you have to change your input to which number? 2 here. Two. That's how you show work. So you copy. If you ever took my algebra 1 class, I will say the most important thing for math is how to copy. Copy is very easy, simple thing, but many students, they ignore this very important step. If you learn how to copy, you learn half of the math. Because every step of the math, we only want to do a little bit things. We only change a little bit. We don't ask you to do too much complicated things. That's why, again, math teacher will always say math is easy. Because every step is supposed to be easy. If you make one step too hard, that's your problem. Okay? So first the step, you copy the original function. That's very important step. Copy how hard it is. And the second step, you insert. There's nothing hard. So far so good, right? So when math teacher say math is easy, you have to trust your teacher. So first I copy and then second I insert. Number three, I evaluate. You may use calculator or you may just like I always use hand calculator. So use hand calculate, I will say equals to negative 2 square is 4. Negative still negative, okay? Square only good for the parentheses. And the plus 2 plus 1. So it's negative 4 plus 3, that's basic math, negative 1. You can use any method to calculate. So this is just a, a algebra 1. And then part B sending, you need to show work. And uh, at this time, you input what? You input negative 1. So from now on in my class, this is not algebra 2. This is not algebra 1. This is precalculus. So I'm going to show you how to input and you have to learn how to calculate by yourself. We don't want to spend too much time to teach you how to evaluate. So you input and again, you can have the output. Now, a little harder is, how about if you input the x plus 1? Yes, you just copy the parentheses. Now, because this is the first time we are talking about the perfect square formula. So let me give you a little review. If you have a plus b square, uh, square. what's the formula? a square plus b square. But not only that. In the middle, you have 2 times a times b. Okay? Some students thought, oh, this is easy. I just distribute the square, become a square, b square. Not only that. Okay? So don't do distribute for the degree. If you have multiplication inside the parentheses, multiplication, then yes. So if you have a times b square, Then yes, it's a square times b square. 
that's yes, okay, that's yes. But when there's, there, there is the addition, you need to pay attention to AB in the middle. So this one is this one. And the rest is algebra, algebra one. So you need to do it by yourself. Here's number five and the number six. Number six, same thing. You want to evaluate. And the, this, this one, okay, this one. This one, what it means? This one means division. Okay, this one means division. So let me. Okay, and the same thing, you input. Did I forgot to put a square? Oh, okay, I already put a square here. Four is two square. Right, this two square. I skip a little bit. And how to evaluate? You do it by yourself. Now, if you input a zero, I didn't show work. If you want me to show work, nine times zero square plus ten divided by zero square. And the 9 times 0 square is just uh, 0. So 10 divided by 0 is 0 square is 0, right? 0. Now, when you have 0 in the denominator, we say the undefined. Now, because this is algebra 2, um, this is pre calculus class. Um, in my algebra 2 class, I talk about if you have denominator 0, means, for example, you have $10. If you had ten dollars, you want to share with zero person, how can you share? Nobody there to share, right? So you say undefined. But in pre-calculus class, I want to tell you this number is infinite big. This number very very big. Why? We can pretend zero. In the denominator is 0 0.00000 something. Okay, 0, 0.00, very small number. Um, if you have, okay, let me talk about why is infinitely big when we have other situation we want to talk about that. But anyway, um, very soon. I'm going to talk about if you have 10 divided by 0, it's, you can say undefined, or you can say very big number, very, very big. And then, how you input the negative x to the function. So you have 9 times x squared plus 10, show the work this way, and uh, x squared. Uh, t square, right? Right now, what's t? t is negative x. Okay. Now, anything after square supposed to be positive, and the x square is already positive itself. So you have nine x square plus ten, and the uh, negative x square, negative negative is positive, and it's x square. You cannot simplify anymore. So when you have unknown number, actually it's even easier. Number seven, evaluate again. You evaluate two to the function and the absolute value. What's absolute value means? No matter you have positive two or negative two, the answer is no sign. No sign means means positive, right? So it's two. And the negative two after a absolute value is two. And the negative two square 
Oh, sorry, there's no negative two anymore. So x square, you just input the x square, right? x square after a Bersu value, because x square itself is already positive. So x square equals to x square. Number eight, we call this a step function. You have two steps. Step function means you have function, but this function have number one function and the number two function together. Okay, one and the two together. Now, when you use number one, when you use number two, when x smaller than five, you use the number one function. When x greater than five or equals to five, you use number two function. Now remember, function, the definition is one input, only one output. So some students, they say, okay, teacher, I'm a very good student. I work very hard. So f of three, I try both functions. So I have 25 take away three square equals to 19, uh, 16. 16, sorry, 16. And I also work, work very hard. 3 minus 5 equals to 10, uh, negative 2. So I input the 3 and I give you two answers. And again, I say this is a function, one input, only one output. Only one answer is correct. So this is correct. And uh, do you expect I will give you partial credit? No, no partial credit. No partial credit. Why? Because you didn't understand the concept of function. So if this is function and they tell you only works for uh, when x smaller than 3, you're supposed to choose number one function, and then you choose both. 3 is not greater than 5. You don't supposed to choose the second function to evaluate. And then you did that, means you didn't have the right concept for the function. So by this way, I don't care you work hard or not, I, I'm not going to give you partial credit because this is precarious class. This is not a basic math. What's harder to evaluate 16 or negative 2, right? It's not hard. So the whole point is not how you evaluate the number for you. The, the important thing for this question is how you choose the right function to evaluate. So if you choose both functions, means you didn't choose at all. So you earn no credit at all. Okay. So this is number eight, and uh, you can just evaluate by yourself as long as you are able to choose the right function to input. So this is number eight. Then we keep going to number nine. Number nine. Uh, you may ignore all this. Okay, just ignore that. Okay. Number nine. So earlier, I have a function and uh, I ask you to input and uh, evaluate. This time, I give you the output. This is output. I give you output and uh, try to solve for input. So earlier I give you input and you evaluate output. And when I give you output, you need to solve for input, not the evaluate input. We can we say we solve for when we when we have equation, we solve for the equation. And how to solve for the equation, I assume you learned that from algebra 2, so I'm not going to reteach again. Number 10. 
something find all the real value so if you find something imaginary number we don't care we want to find we want to find the real input and the same thing the output is zero and what's the input so we make a function equal to zero before we make a equal to zero we can factor by for you So if you don't remember what's factor by four year, um, we can discuss in the class time, and then I can teach you individually online. Okay, uh, factor by four year is the skill you have to learn from algebra one, and the x square means x times x. Negative twelve, negative six times two. And you may think about 3 times 4, 4 times 3, other choice, or 1 times 12, right? So this, what's the right choice? Basically, we try error. And how to do that for more detail, we can talk about it. It's a review. And hopefully, you have no problem to, to factor by 4 years. Now, when you want to solve for a second degree, or we say quadratic function equation. We want to solve for zero. When we make it equal to zero, we factor by four year. And then when you have two number multiply equal to zero, if they are both not zero, it can never be zero. So at least one of them need to be zero. That's how we guess the answer. Okay? You want to make two number multiply equal to zero. So we can easily guess either this one equal to zero or the second one equal to zero to make the whole thing equal to zero. So there's a roughly concept review for you. So if the second first one equals zero, then x needs to be six. If the second factor needs to be zero, then x needs to be negative two. So that's number ten. Number eleven. Starting from number 11, that's a very important thing you have to deal with. It's called find the domain of the function. Find the domain of the function is, let me write down the idea for you. Find all the x in domain. Uh, find all the x which make f of t. Uh, right now we don't want to use x, we use t. The input, okay? A function. So whenever you see this question, you are going to see a lot of this type of question. Find the domain of a function. Means you want to find all the input. Which make this is a function. Now basically, um, it's hard to find all the input because too many input to make a function. So basically we kick out. I say kick out the troublemaker t. So whatever the t make this f not a function, we kick it out. And the rest, we save the rest. And save the rest. OK? Now, when we have this type of question, I want to tell you some secret. So, most answer, let me change the color, most of domain are 
all real. Most are all real. So like number 11, the answer is all real. You, and why I can easily recognize that. Okay. Most of the domain are all real. Except what? Except when you have a denominator or when you have a even root. Okay. Why you have to pay attention on those domain? Because the denominator need to be not a zero. You need to kick out whatever the input make a denominator equal to zero. And the inside the even root need to be positive. So you need to kick out whatever the zero uh, positive or zero is fine. So you need to kick out whatever is negative. So not a not a negative. Okay. So number one, because this three is other number, you don't need to worry about square root of like a square root of negative twenty-seven, cube root of negative twenty-seven. Is negative three is fine. It's okay. This is definitely okay. Okay. But if you have square root of negative nine, then it's a it's a problem, right? It's undefined. Or you say imaginary number. We want we don't want to say undefined right now because we are not the preschool kids, right? We say equals to three i, not real. Okay. So when we talk about the domain, basically we want to find the real output. Output need to be real. So we want to measure a function or we say y is real numbers. Okay. So let's number 11 and when we talk about the number 12, because this is a denominator here. When you see denominator, you want to measure denominator cannot be zero. So you kick out this troublemaker. So how you solve for denominator equal zero, you need to factor. Pull out the common factor, and you have two factors. Either this one equal to zero, or this one equal to zero, or we say not equal to zero. When we Make it equal zero, we say or, but right now not, we say and. X cannot be zero, X cannot be five. Okay, so the domain will be, I didn't write down the domain, sorry. Domain, domain is X, and the X, you kick out zero, X kick out the five. So um, some will say X is real. You you need to you want to say x is real or not real? You don't didn't say that doesn't matter. Okay, will be the same thing. So when you don't say x is real, x is real, but you do need to say x is not zero, x is not a five. Keep going. Number thirteen and the fourteen are all the problem. I will quickly finish this one. Why? Because all the problem supposed to be easy. The hardest part is just reading and understand the question. So if you have x, um, if this is 24, a square which is 24, this is 24, right? I don't want to write down inside. Write down inside looks like a, uh, looks like a, 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 rate, a area. So outside, this, the length is 24. And uh, this is x. This is x. So 24 take away 2x is the inside. Okay? 
and if you make a box, so this is x, and this is also 24 minus 2x, because you have 2x here. So the volume supposed to be 24 minus, 20, uh, two, minus 2x, then times width, and the times height. Um, but you don't need to do that. This question is not that hard. You don't need to really find the function of the volume. They just give you some examples. If you input one to the function, two, three, four, five, six, you are going to see the biggest number here is one, zero, two, four. Okay. And if you make it as the coordinate, 1, 484, 2, 800, and so on, you make it as a coordinate. And then you, you plug in to the graph. You have this, and this one is this one. You have the highest point. So this is number number twelve. Let me see. Oh, here. Okay. So part C. Part C. Why I choose this answer? The x need to be between twelve and the zero. Why? Because um the dense need to be positive, right? 24 take away 2x. This is a real, um, this is a water problem. So most of real, uh, the water problem is dealing with the real life. So you have to consider the major, the measurement need to be positive. It is a zero, but sometimes if, if equal to zero, why we bother to major, right? So you don't talk about equal to zero, okay? And then, if you talk about the dense need to be positive, then we solve for x. How we solve for x? You take away 24 on both sides. Let me redu review a little bit for you. So you have negative 2x greater than negative 24. Now remember, when you want to solve for x, you want to divide by negative 2. When you want to divide by a negative, number you need to rewrite don't directly divide by negative 2 okay why because when you divide by a negative number when you divide by a negative number you need to switch the direction of the inequality sign why because if you have 3 greater than 2 what happened you have negative 3 and a negative 2 you need to change. If you are rich, rich than me, and right now, actually, you are in debt more than me. When you in debt more than me, means poor, right? Okay. So, keep in mind, I review for you, so you want to divide or multiply with a negative number, you need to switch the inequality sign. And then you can solve for that. And also, x need to be positive. So after we solve for this, you have x smaller than 12. But also be careful, x is also the height, cannot be negative number, and cannot be 0, right? So you have dense width, need to be positive and the height x need to be positive also so that's why you have this answer okay so let's go to very last question number 14 number 14 same thing this is the um step function again and the step function talking about two parts one and the two so this is number one, number two. That's pretty obvious. 
and you plug in the right data and you choose the right function and then you can evaluate. Now after evaluate, you graph according to the year and then you can easily graph. So that's the graph. Oh, we still have number 15 and the 16. Okay, let me finish these two questions. Uh, 15 and 16, I already show <coughs> my detailed work. <clears throat> For you go to calculus, you are going to deal with this type of calculating a lot. And the very simple easy you, you just plug in, follow. You plug in. So this is, uh, let me erase the mark here. Okay. So this one is this one. Yes. And then this one is this one. You just plug in and the copy. Remember, we say copy. I copy the function. This is f, this is another f function, this f of 9, right? This f of 9 plus h. You plug in and then just do all the detailed calculations. This algebra, one level of the calculations. So I will let you try by yourself. And the same thing here, this one, kind of a little hard this is f of x oh sorry let me erase so this is f of x okay and uh, this is if i change it to plus so this will be the one, but I distribute. Okay, I distribute. So become minus. Okay, you can go and try to calculate by yourself. Now, um, a little hard is because this number was that you can just dip it there. Don't worry about it. Okay, you leave your answer. This form is fine. So you go home, try 15 and the 16 calculate by yourself. You don't need to watch my um you don't need to read my calculation because um, you can calculate just by yourself. Just input and evaluate, simplify. Or not evaluate, input, simplify. Then you are supposed to have the same answer. If not, you can ask me. Um, you show me your work. When you do all the calculations and you have hard time to get it right, the best way you learn is you show me your work and I try to find the mistake from your work. That's the best way to learn. So don't just copy my way and uh, try to do it right. Okay, try to do it by yourself and uh, try error, that's fine. And uh, if you got it right, you are good. If you didn't get it right, uh, show me your work and I will correct you and uh, teach you how to do it right during the class time online. Okay, so thanks for your watching. Uh, see you next time, bye-bye.